Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So you're watching this video because you either own or you're thinking about buying a Mac that runs on Apple Silicon, so the M1 or the M2 chip. And you know that those chips run ARM, so it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to run an Intel VM on the Macs. And you're wondering, can I actually set up a Windows analysis environment, a Windows malware lab, on the new Macs? The answer is yes. Nice. But there's a couple caveats, and so we'll walk you through those here today. And for those of you wondering, didn't we already post something about this on our Patreon? You're remembering correctly. We actually posted a full write-up on how to build a Windows malware analysis lab, a VM infrastructure, on the new M1 Max in August. However, a lot has changed since we put out that post, and I personally have been testing a bunch of different hypervisors, and the information there is a little bit outdated. So I wanted to make a follow-up video and just explain the current state as of, what are we, November? So November 2022 is when I'm recording this. Based on the speed at which things have been changing just in the past couple months, I expect maybe this video will be a bit out of date pretty soon, but at least for now, you know that this is the current information. And for all of you who like to creep our back catalog of videos, if you're watching this sometime in the future, 2025 or whatever, this is probably not relevant, so you can probably click past it. All right, with that, let's get into it. So. The first thing you need to know when you're trying to set up a Windows-based malware analysis VM, a, a lab, on one of these new Macs is that the hypervisors, the things that actually run the VMs for you, have taken a little while to catch up with Apple's new M1 chip. So in August, UTM, which is a free open source hypervisor, was our choice for the best free hypervisor. It's free. I'll put a link down below the video if you guys want to go try it out. But before you install it, since August, VMware have released a free preview, a tech preview, which I think they're leaving free for a year or so, of their VMware hypervisor, which you guys know I run on my Intel Macs. I like the VMware Fusion interface for running multiple VMs. I think it's intuitive. And of course, those of you running server infrastructure, None of this applies to you because you're probably not running a bunch of Mac servers. So that's not what we're talking about here today. We're talking about personal sandboxes, malware analysis lab on your laptop, on your desktop. How are we doing it today? And the way I'm doing it today is I'm using VMware's Tech Preview 22H2, that's the release of VMware Fusion for the M1 Max. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. It is free, which is why I'm recommending it. And if you wanna go for the pure open source version, UTM also works, but it's still missing a lot of features like snapshots, power off, et cetera. There's, there's a bunch of things which we covered in our Patreon blog post if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. So just to recap, for hypervisors on the M1, you either have the tech preview for VMware Fusion or you have the free open source UTM. Now there's also a third paid option called Parallels, which apparently works well, but it's a paid option. I don't use it. Other people say it's good, but I'm not gonna include it in the discussion here today because we wanna only focus on free stuff, how to set up a free lab. So for us, our hypervisor of choice is VMware Fusion Tech Preview 22H2. I'll link that below the video. And the next thing you need to know is that to date, there isn't really a solution for running an Intel VM on an M1 MacBook. Now, those of you out there who are super hackers, Giga Chat Game Hacker, know that you can actually use a Kimu shim with UTM to run Intel based Windows on your M1 ARM MacBook. I personally have tried this, I've tried a lot of configurations. It's too slow, it does not work. Don't waste your time on it. November 2022 might change in the future, but right now, don't even bother. I'm sure there's a few uh, actually guys out there in the comments who are gonna say you can run Intel. Sure, you can run it, but it runs like molasses. It seems like we're stuck in some sort of weird underwater world, so I don't recommend it. I recommend going forward with a Windows ARM release. Run the ARM release on the hypervisor. There's no translation going on. Both UTM and VMware Fusion support ARM Windows, so you can run an ARM Windows VM. And that brings us to our next topic. What sort of Windows VM are you gonna be running? So my recommendation is to use Windows 11 ARM. There's currently some beta releases out there if you're a Windows insider, which you can sign up for for free. It takes you know two minutes to sign up and then you get access to these free beta releases of Windows 11 ARM. Windows 11 ARM 
actually works well. I've been using it for a couple months now as my primary driver when I'm traveling on VMware Fusion on a MacBook with an M1. So that's my setup. It actually works. And that's what we'll be talking about here today. Now there's a couple of caveats here and they mostly involve the fact that you'll be running ARM Windows. They actually don't have much to do with the fact that there's a you know beta tested hypervisor that you're gonna be using. The hypervisor mostly works. I'll talk about two little caveats when you're installing it, but otherwise it works. Really all of the finicky stuff that is a little bit different comes from the fact that you're gonna be running ARM Windows. And that means that any Intel application, any x86 application that you're running is going to have to run through a virtualizer in Windows. And the virtualizer works pretty much the same way that WoW 64 allowed you to run 32-bit applications on 64-bit Windows. All of you guys are probably doing that right now and you haven't really noticed any issues. Or mostly you haven't noticed issues. So those of you who didn't notice any issues there probably won't notice any issues running ARM Windows. You can debug regular 32-bit, 64-bit x86 malware, no problem. However, there's a couple of caveats, so stick around. So to get started here, first thing we wanna do is download and install the Tech Preview 22H2 from VMware. You are going to need to have a VMware account. It's free to set up an account. Once you have the account, you can just log in, link is below. Once that's installed, you're gonna to need to get yourself a copy of these beta releases of a Windows 11 ARM. Now, the way I did that and the way that I recommend you do it is create an account with Microsoft, link is below, sign up as a Windows Insider. It is free, it takes a couple minutes to set it up. If you think Microsoft is creepy, I think they're creepy, Ew. just set up with a fake account. They don't know any difference. Use one of those burner accounts online. <laughs> anyway, once you have that set up, you're gonna go to the link I placed below the video here, and you're gonna go to download the preview of ARM Windows 11. Now, one important thing when we're downloading here is make sure you click the beta channel release, not the dev release. Beta channel is much more stable. You're gonna find less bugs in it, so just use the beta release. Once you've selected that, click download and Microsoft is gonna give you a VHDX file. Now, what the fuck is a VHDX file? Okay, so this is where things get a tiny bit complicated. Microsoft expects that you're gonna be running these Windows 11 preview VMs under Hyper-V. Of course, you're not gonna be doing that. What you could do is if you are using UTM, you can just import the VHDX file directly into UTM. But we're actually using VMware Fusion, which requires a different format. They use a VMDK format for the virtualized disk. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to convert the VHDX to VMDK. I'll link a nice guide below the video, but I can also just show you guys here. It's just a quick command line tool. Make sure you have the Kimu tool set installed as you most people probably do. If you don't, you can just do the brew install Kimu. And then you can use Kimu image to convert from a VHDX to a VMDK. All right, so now that you have your VMDK file, the next part is pretty straightforward. You just walk through the create a new custom VM wizard here in VMware. And when it comes to adding a virtual disk, you just select the newly generated VMDK disk file that you just created. So once you've done that, it'll take a little while to boot up here. And once it boots up, you should boot into a install screen for Windows. Now here's where we run into our second little caveat, and that is that because this is a tech preview of VMware Fusion, and it's a beta release of Windows 11, a bunch of stuff is kind of messed up with the drivers. So normally you would have out of the box networking support if you're trying to do this with like the Intel release of Windows 11 and VMware Fusion for an Intel Mac, this would just work. But in this case, it doesn't work. What we need to do is we need to actually install the VMware tools before the installation process proceeds. So right here on the very first install screen for Windows, you just press Shift F10, and that'll pop up this little command box here. And in the command box, you type out PowerShell, just give yourself a PowerShell prompt. And then what you wanna do is go up to the VMware Fusion settings, and you want to select install VMware tools. Now, what this will do is this will, in the background, it'll load a virtual DVD drive in the D drive. And so now you can access the D drive from your PowerShell. So change directories into the D drive in your PowerShell here, enable run permissions for the install file, 
and then enable run permissions for PowerShell here. Out of the box, it's restricted, so we just want to enable that. And then we can run the installer. And the installer will run. It'll install the drivers that you need to enable networking. And then you just want to reboot. You don't want to proceed with the install, just reboot the VM. Now that you've rebooted, you can actually go through the install process as you would normally. Select whatever you want from the, the prompts as they go along. One thing I recommend you don't go through the Microsoft install my online identity stuff. Instead, select that this is a domain joined workstation and that will allow you to set up a local username and password. Obviously, if you do the cloud-based identity, that's gonna be in your VM. And if you're using this to debug malware, maybe you don't want you know that cloud identity in the VM, right? So usually we just select that it's a domain joined system and then use a local username and password. I just use admin and password because, you know, it's a cyber range VM that's going to be detonating malware. So I don't really care. Okay. So now once we have everything installed, we reboot and you guys have a fresh, clean install of Windows 11 ARM, which you can actually just go ahead and use. It works pretty good. Like I said, I've been using it for the past few months and it hasn't given me any trouble. Now, if you want to stick around, I'll show you guys how to disable Windows Defender. And once you have Windows Defender disabled, which is actually kind of tricky on Windows 11, then you can install whatever tools you want, take a snapshot and start using it as your malware analysis machine. So last step here, disabling Windows Defender. Nothing really works. The registry hacks don't work anymore. GPO doesn't seem to work. The only thing that I know works for sure is to boot into safe mode and remove the privileges from Windows Defender so it can't actually run itself. I saw that hack on the Lazy Admin blog. I will link that below. Thank you very much, Lazy Admin. And it has worked for me. So here's how to do it. You open up MS Config here and click over to the boot options, click Safe Boot apply OK and reboot into safe mode. So once we've booted into safe mode, open Explorer and find the program data Microsoft Windows Defender folder and right click on the folder, select properties and the security tab here. And then if you click advanced, you can change the owner of the folder. So to change the owner of the folder, you wanna click change here, then do advanced, find now and select administrators. You're in the administrators group. So once you select that, you should have access to change permissions of the folder. Now, once you have access to change permissions for the folder, what you wanna do is remove all the other users' permissions from the folder. Now, before you do that, make sure you click the replace all child object permissions here. And then all you have to do is just click and remove, remove, remove. All right, now that that's removed, you can open up MS config again disable safe boot, reboot, and now Defender should have no permissions. It can't be started because even system doesn't have permissions to access that folder. So that seemed to work for me. Again, nothing else I tried worked. If you guys have another solution that's less hacky, leave it below. I'd love to be able to disable it without removing permissions, which is crazy. I'm sure it breaks some stuff as well. But again, this is just a detonation VM for malware, so it's not a big deal if it's a little bit jank. Okay, so once that's all done and we're rebooted into our regular mode here, we have a VM that's ready to go. Now, personally, I like to have the Flare VM tools installed on my malware analysis VMs. Now, if you don't know what Flare VM is, it's basically an install script that installs a bunch of tools and changes some settings to give you a nice malware analysis VM environment. Now, the project is maintained by Mandiant and it's up on their GitHub. I will link it below. Now, I've run into a little bit of an issue. They don't support Windows 11 yet. And of course, Windows 11 ARM is what I recommend using for the M1 MacBooks. So what I did is I forked that repo. It's up on our OA Labs GitHub. Again, I'll link that below. And I removed all of the stuff that breaks from Windows 10. There's a bunch of programs that install that you know can't be installed. You know, like Intel drivers and stuff like that. You can't install those on ARM. So I removed that stuff. And it mostly works now. At least the install will complete and most of the tools are there. And I consolidated all those changes into a Windows 11 profile. So you can just download it from our GitHub here and run it with the Windows 11 profile and it should install okay. There's a few things that are still a little bit broken I need to fix up, but it's mostly working and the install process should complete. Though it takes a while, it takes a couple hours actually. It takes way longer than it should. But anyway, it's working. And once I've tested it enough, maybe some feedback from you guys, I will try and merge it back with a PR into the main Mandiant GitHub. So that's it for installing a Windows Malware Analysis VM. 
on an M1 or M2 Mac. Like I said, it does work. And November 2022, it's all free. That might change in the future. I'm sure the beta releases of Windows 11 are going to go away eventually. And I'm sure VMware is going to start charging for their hypervisor eventually. So in the future, it may not be free. But for right now, it's free. It's a good solution. And it does work. Now, before we wrap up, there is one more thing. Most of the malware analysis stuff I've done under Windows 11 ARM works fine. IDA runs fine. X64 debug runs fine, etc. However, you have to keep in mind that like 32-bit applications on 64-bit Windows, all 32 and 64-bit applications on ARM Windows are running virtualized. And that means all syscalls go through a virtualizer. Now, this mostly works okay. You can run applications, you can debug them, everything works fine. However, if you're tracing 64-bit malware, and you have a lot of syscalls that you're trying to trace into, or you're trying to step into the syscalls, you can cause the debugger to crash. I've also had random returns in my trace files, which obviously some execution has happened, which was not caught in the trace. I've had a bunch of weird behavior. Hey guys, I'm just editing this right now, and I realize I'm making it sound worse than it is. It's not really that bad. Uh, big credit to Duncan, the main developer for X64 Debug, sponsored me link for his GitHub up there. Um, he's basically fixed both of the bugs that I'm complaining about here. Uh, you can now debug over syscalls with x86 uh, Intel applications, no problem. The only thing is that it kind of returns outside of the syscall, the same behavior that you would expect for a 32-bit application running under WoW 64. If you're familiar with that behavior, it's the same thing here. Um, the only real limitation is that you obviously can't run any Intel drivers, any Intel kernel stuff, obviously the kernel's ARM. And of course you have the limitations of you can't trace into the syscalls, but that's to be expected. I don't know why I'm making it sound so bad here. I should quit whining. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this. For the most part, myself at least, I'm mostly just doing user land analysis of Windows malware, which is all user land. I mean, there's barely any kernel stuff now, so it's probably fine. However, if you're doing any analysis of malware that enters into the kernel, anything that has a driver, that's not gonna work here. Obviously, you can't run Intel drivers on ARM Windows. It's not gonna work. So there are caveats. As long as you stay in user land, should be fine. So there you have it. For November 2022, this is the state of the art for a Windows malware analysis VM on an M1 or an M2 Mac. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of content, I encourage you to go check out our Patreon. Lots more stuff like this over there. We're also streaming on Twitch every Thursday and Sunday. And like and subscribe. I don't, do we still do that? Who, who the f knows? <laughs> what the fuck is an algorithm? When I open YouTube's homepage, I say, man, fuck the algorithm. Who knows what's going on here? All right, guys, stay curious. Keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware. See ya.